Welcome to Coffee with Kupke, a production of St. Paul Inside the Walls. Here on Coffee with Kupke, we grab a cup of coffee, at least we're claiming this is coffee. We sit with Monsignor Kupke, Raymond Kupke, the pastor of St. Anthony's in Hawthorne, professor at Immaculate Conception Seminary, diocesan archivist. We sit with Monsignor Kupke to delve into the history of Catholicism in the Diocese of Patterson. My name is Father Paul Manning. I am the Vicar for Evangelization for the Diocese of Patterson. And here I am with Monsignor Kupke. So grab your cup of coffee and let's jump right in. I'm going to take a sip. I am embarrassed, Raymond, uh, to um, admit uh, something that I may have known once upon a time but forgot, maybe the first time I read your book a long, long time ago. I, I'm, it's hard for me to say this in the camera, but... Oh, just spit it out. Saying... <laughs> St. James of the Marches. Ah, totally. I have always thought mm -hmm. that this is an odd title for either St. James the Apostle, the greater or the less. No. I was shocked. It's named after James a, of the Marches. A famous Franciscan preacher. Might I say an obscure Franciscan preacher? Not if you're Franciscan. <laughs> okay. Actually, he has a window in St. Bonaventure's Church in Patterson. So, St. James of the Marches was a... <laughs> James comes from the era when the, um, the preaching ministry is being reinvented. So, he comes from the era of Dominic, Francis, Vincent Ferrer, mm -hmm. John of Capistrano. Okay. Um, he's one of those guys. And was there a, a big devotion to him at this time when, when, when uh, Totowa was uh, founded? No. I'm just, I, I suspect that he may be, Totowa may be the only church in the country that's dedicated to him. Well, that's what they claim. Yes. Um, so who on earth decided that they needed to name this parish after him? I don't know if we have done this part yet. Have we talked about the great Benny Placida more? No. no, and right. that was in my notes. What is a Benny Placidum? But right, so, so we're going to go. Right. Here we go. We're not going to get as far as we hoped. Go ahead. <laughs> well, this goes back to Father Francis Koch. Yeah, we are going to talk about right, him. So uh, he was obsessed with this notion of building churches. It personally offended him when he would take train trips to come through little villages in New Jersey and see a Protestant church, yes. but no Catholic church. So he just kept on helping little Catholic communities build churches. And may I ask, this it becomes known as the Catholic Extension Society? He, no, it doesn't become, but he becomes involved in it. He becomes the national vice president. Of the Catholic church Extension, extension Society. Society. Oh, Catholic Which is Church still, Extension Society. Operating today, and so just a word about what is that? The Catholic Church it's, it's Extension a, Society. It's a uh, group that helps fund Catholic churches. So it's not missionary. It's it's dealing with Catholics it's who are all, missionary. Yeah, got it. Got rather it. than foreign missionary. Oh, so helping, but it's, helping. Out of, it's out of Chicago today. Okay, they're the ones that produce the calendar. Very yeah. Well oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But uh, uh, some people may be unfamiliar right. with it. Yeah. Not our readers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or listeners, I should yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as a result, there's a whole bunch that are founded out of the Franciscan monasteries in Butler and Patterson. So, Well, the, when you read this part of the, of, the, of the chapter, you're just amazed at the parishes that have their origins yes. as a result of uh, Father Francis. Francis was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a story. Uh, he founded St. Elizabeth's in Wyckoff, okay. right, which is also Franciscan. You know, Elizabeth of Hungary is the patroness of the Third Order Franciscans. You know. But anyway, um, he was taking the train on Sunday. Apparently, he said Sunday Mass in Wyckoff. And they described him as, you know, always getting on the last car of the train, 
and not taking a seat, but working his way through the whole train, talking, to introducing people. himself, telling people. By the time he would get to Wyckoff, he'd have a whole bag of donations. For oh, his. my. Wow. He was just an indefatigable uh, collector. You know. his, the story about him and the founding of St. Catharines in Ringwood there was a tiny little... Catherine of Bologna. Catherine of Bologna, another yeah. Franciscan. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a little tiny church in Ringwood, St. Mary's, and it was falling down, and uh, Francis was determined to replace it. You know, so he goes to St. Boniface in Patterson because he and the pastor are both Germans. And he goes to Adelbert Fry, the pastor there, and says, you know, you and I are paisans. Yeah, you know? yeah, except um, in German. Yeah, except yeah. in German, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever the, he says, you know, yeah. you know I, I, I'm trying to do something up there in Ringwood, you know, can you help me? So Fry allows him to take up a Sunday collection in St. Boniface. Armed with that, he goes to St. Bonaventure's in Patterson. Okay. The Franciscan Church and says to them, you know, my, my German confrere gave me a whole Sunday collection. Surely my Franciscan brethren would not yeah. do less for me. Yeah. And so they give him a Sunday collection. You know. So armed with this, he goes downtown McNulty. to the cathedral to McNulty. Oh my, wow. And says to him, you know, the, the two little churches, St. Boniface and St. Bonaventure, <laughs> both gave me, surely the magnanimous great dean of the whole city and the whole world, surely yeah. he would not be found wanting in his generosity. So Dean McNulty falls for this. He probably knows Koch and knows he's not going to get out of this one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they give him a Sunday collection. So at this point, he's got almost enough to do what he wants to do in Ringwood, but he needs about $500 more. So he convinces this woman, a uh, somewhat well-off woman, and approaches her with this problem. And guess what her name is? Yeah, Catherine. Catherine Crew is Crew, it? right. Yeah. So she gives him a $500 donation, and the new church in Ringwood goes up, but under St. Catherine. Yes. Rather than... But all of those churches are Franciscan names, like Holy Angels and Little Folds is really Our Lady of the Holy Angels the Franciscan Church in Assisi, the Mother Church. Got it. St. Francis in Wanaku, yes. St. Clair's in Clifton, wow. St. Anthony's Butler, St. James. Man. All yeah. of these are Franciscan. All of his, they're uh, all Franciscan saints. Yeah, wow. Um, one, one of the things I love about uh, uh, Father Koch is that um, he decides, I think, around the age of 60, that he, he, he's, he wants his, to retire. His life is near its end, and he goes back to Germany. To, to uh, live a life of prayer. Oh, and, right, right, to prepare for death. Right. And you say within a year he figures out that this is the last thing he wants to do or the place he wants to be. Right. And he comes back and lives until his 80s? Yes, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Between you and me, he reminds me a little bit of Kevin Flanagan. Okay, yeah. We, yeah, our storied first pass, uh, uh, my first pastor, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, and he was indefatigable. He would... He would go collect money. He was good yeah. at it. He liked doing it. And, yeah. You know. But you mentioned before a word that uh, ha has me scratching my head, a bene placitum. Yes. So what is that, and what does this have to do with what we're talking about, a bene placitum? In 1911, our friend Bishop O'Connor, who we talked about the last time, is so impressed with the work that the Franciscans are doing and setting up all these little mission churches, you know, all across, that he gives them a formal document called a bene placitum. It's just Latin good, for... Good, please, please, uh, may well, it please. please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, he cedes pastoral control of all of Passaic County. That's amazing. <clears throat> west of Patterson to the Franciscans and, and gives that whole territory to them to develop and coordinate and... So um, what, what kind of responsibility do they still have to the ordinary of the diocese? Or is the, oh, he's or, still the bishop, you know. Yeah. But, and basically he's saying, you're it out there, you know. Yeah, and, and so the, the Franciscan hierarchy would have a lot to say about the way right. things operate. Right, right. 
uh, you know, who goes where and who doesn't go where and, and what gets built and what doesn't get built. Are, are the, the um, religious orders, do they receive a bene placitum? Not ordinarily, no. Oh. Now, this was an unusual territorial grant. It's almost yeah. like establishing a parish and saying in perpetuity this mm. will be Franciscan territory. So as the Franciscans, out of uh, 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 concerns about personnel, stepped away from these parishes. Have, yeah. But well, the, the real you know, glitch in the whole problem was the, <clears throat> the Great Bloody Placidum War of 1944. This sounds fantastic. The, the Great Bloody Benny Plachetum War yes. of what year? 1944. All right, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit, but just give us give us a, a glimpse of that. By the time we get to the end of World War II, many of these places are beginning to grow. Okay. But they are still treated as missions by the Franciscans. None of them had a resident priest. Oh, because the Franciscans are living in community. The Franciscans yeah. are living in two monasteries, St. Bonaventure's in Patterson and St. Anthony's, Anthony's in Butler. Butler yeah. And from these two places, they are staffing as many as 23 little church missions all over the place. Yes. So they're going out every Sunday. In some cases, they're going out every day to say Mass, mm. covering funerals and weddings, but they don't actually live there. Mm. They're all living in the monastery. So by the time we get to the 40s and the end of the war, these, some of these places have grown markedly. Yes. But still they're, no still being, they're still being treated as... So this catches Bishop McLaughlin, the first Bishop of Patterson. Okay. And he thinks something should be done about this. You know, he's, he's creating new parishes that are smaller than some of these Franciscan missions yes. that have nobody at them. So he writes to the Franciscans and says, you know, I, I think we should look at this and, you know, adjust the Bene Placitum. You know, no answer. They, <laughs> they stonewall him. And McLaughlin is not somebody to be stonewalled. Okay. So he writes again, you know, a little bit more insistently, you know. Yeah. And the, still, you know, I think the, the provincials as well, maybe we could look at this, you know, but... They're not interested in doing this. At, the, at this point, it's becoming a male placitum. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> so McLaughlin is a stickler for canon law. You know, he, McLaughlin, during the height of his career, was at one point vicar general of Newark, auxiliary bishop of Newark, and rector of the seminary. Why? And in the Newark archives... They have letters from him to himself. <laughs> he was such a precise, you know, yeah. uh, dear, uh, dear uh, Bishop yes. McLaughlin, I will, I will come to confer tonsure at Immaculate Conception Seminary. Sincerely, Bishop McLaughlin. You know. yeah. uh, <laughs> the rector writing to the auxiliary bishop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he notices in his legal mind, legal mind, that... The Franciscans have violated the, oh no, the Bene Placitum of 1911 mm. by opening, of all places, the Mission Church in Lincoln Park. St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's. In Lincoln Park. Because that's in Morris County. Oh, wow. And that is not in the, the territory. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So... As a result? As a result, McLaughlin turns all of his howitzers toward the Franciscan <laughs> headquarters and shoots this bomb at them and saying, because you have violated the Bene Placidum, I'm taking all the churches away from you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So that got their attention. And as a result, they negotiated. Good, good. It's nice to hear... Uh, church people negotiating yes, every now yes. and then. Yeah. So the result of the negotiation was that the Franciscans gave up St. Clair's in Clifton, okay. St. James in Totowa, mm. and Holy Cross in Wayne um, to the diocese. Okay. And they agreed to build rectories at the other ones. Wow. At Little Falls. And they also gave up St. Joseph's Lincoln Park. Yes. 
And they agreed to build rectories or friaries then in Little Falls, Ringwood, Wanaku, uh, Hewitt, uh, Pompton Lakes, uh, all the other places, except for the two that were only summer missions, Upper Greenwood Lake and Sterling Forest. But basically, so on January 1st, 1945, all these places become formal canonical parishes and for the first time. Like, yeah. uh, one of them is, you know, St. Joe's in West Milford, yeah. which has been there since 1765. Finally, in 1945, it becomes, becomes a, a canonical yeah. wow. parish. Yeah, founded the, by Father Farmer, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. So, so that's at, the great Benny Placitum. So at the, at the, it, it, does the Benny Placitum cease to exist? It's, it's gone. It's null and void I, yeah, at this I point. I think it is yeah. at this point, yeah. yeah. Okay. They don't refer to it again. Yes, okay. And that they is, don't refer to it, you know, in the 90s and 2000s when they start handing back the other yeah, parishes. That's tools. true, that's true. So, uh, but there is, <clears throat> there is certainly that Franciscan residue. You know, for example... Um, the Franciscan residue, nicely phrased. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if you go into the little church in Wayne, Holy Cross, mm. you know, uh, they have a series of windows which are just wonderful, you know, from an historic point. They are, you know, it was holy. They are windows that portray the importance of the cross in the history of the Franciscan order. So they have a window of the Japanese Franciscan martyrs being crucified at Nagasaki. Wow. Uh, a window of Bonaventure, you know, meditating on the cross, mm. a window of... John of, uh, John of Capistrano using the cross and preaching mm-hmm. um, the the uh, I, I can't Francis help. yeah do they have a window of St James of the Marches no <laughs> just that Bonaventure say. says that window that oh you told me that that's true so um, we're let's go back to the dawn of a new age and I wanted to uh, point out. Uh, your discussion of the poverty of country parishes <laughs> in this early uh, early part of the 20th century. Um, and in particular, you mentioned that some of these country parishes were struggling to such an extent that they closed parish schools, yeah. which, uh, you know, we don't really think of that ever happening until recently. Mount Hope does that, and Newton... And, and then also the, the burden of cathedral assessments. So talk a little bit about the poverty of country parishes. Well, the, the, the growth of New Jersey and the growth in uh, wealth, if you will, mm. you know, it has not quite hit the farthest western you know, areas. So yeah. when you're dealing with Sussex County and even the, the far reaches of Morris County, um, you know, this was no man's land, and uh, it's amazing. it was very tough. You know, we only, at that point, we only had two priests in Sussex County, one in Newton and one in Franklin. Wow. And they're both struggling, you know, to survive. Uh, yeah. Well, as, as we mentioned, I think in an, there were, uh, in an earlier episode, there were only about 500 Catholics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe by this time, a couple hundred more, but... Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we have a couple of letters, you know, that the custom in the Newark Diocese, I mean, it was a very structured way of doing things, but, you know, you, uh, a, a man <clears throat> became a pastor by seniority. Okay. So, you know, as priests died, um, whoever was next in line basically would be given that parish unless it was a really big one. Then they would move somebody yeah, and, and he'd, he'd get, get the... the yeah. Yeah. But basically it was by seniority and they they were strict clung to this for, yeah. for decades, you know. Interesting. Uh, even uh, Auxiliary Bishop Costello, you know, at first was only an administrator of St. Peter's in Belleville because his seniority, mm. even though he was a bishop, his seniority as a priest had not yet come up. Wow. Um, I think the guy in uh, the Italian parish in East Orange was administrator for like 22 years until his, they needed him there because of his Italian ability. Yeah. But he didn't become pastor until his seniority. Interesting. So, you know, the thing that they all dreaded was that 
Netcom or Newton would come open when they were next in line. Because these <laughs> and they were, would be banished. They would be banished <laughs> to, to the Siberia. end of the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> and, uh, we have a letter from the pastor of Netcom, you know, begging the bishop O'Connor, you know, to lower his diocesan assessment. I think from from fifteen dollars to ten dollars. Wow! Because you know, he says we don't have electricity out here. You know, I I can't I can't oh no use, sidewalks no so I, I, right. I can't run functions to raise money right I can't even run like a little bazaar or something because we have no way to illuminate it at night because wow. we have no electricity out here yeah you know, yeah uh, it, it's just is he the one who wrote and said can you it, I, I'd be able to help you more if you gave me a better assignment yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 uh, you know they were they you know in in their minds you know all real life was in Bayonne. Jersey City, East Orange, you know, and this was, this was an exile into the woods. Yes. And you just hope that they remember that you were there when something better came up. Yeah. Well, next time we, we uh, meet, we'll we'll talk about uh, so many of our parishes that began as vacation summer places. I mean, you remember in your childhood what Chester was like. Yeah. You yeah. know how remote it was, and You're right, and it was not the quaint little no, uh, no, t- not the shishi boutique, yeah, yeah, no, 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 and and it, you know, it, it, and then go back fifty years of what Chester would have looked yeah, like, yeah, for sure. So they have time. a they have a story for a brief period, you know, very very brief, two years I think. We had a second parish in Netcom an Italian parish, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Mm. And they talk, you know, it, 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 it just couldn't make it work. But they talk about, you know, the people bringing chickens to the pastor yes. to pay the stipend for a mass or wow. a funeral. You know, wow. that's how... That's and he's, how rural and he's looking and, and saying, "What am I going to do with this chicken? I'm going. Am I going to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you got to kill it and pluck it, right? Yeah, well... <laughs> Anyway, next time we're going to talk uh, about a couple things, but eventually get to two giants, I think, Father Francis Koch, about whom we already spoke, and then a priest named uh, Cornelius Clifford. All right. So next time. Thanks. Let's leave it there. I want all of you who are listening or watching to make sure that you keep an eye out or an ear out for the next episode of Coffee with Kupke. In order to stay on top of new releases, make sure you follow or subscribe wherever you're listening. And if you are on YouTube, please do drop a like and hit the bell for notifications. While you're at it, make sure to check out the other shows produced by the diocese. Those shows are Beyond the Beacon, hosted by Bishop Kevin Sweeney and Jay Agnish, our Director of Communications and the Paul Street Journal, hosted by Brian Hansberger and Freddie Garcia. I want to give a special thanks to Joe Genexi, our sound and visual engineer, Caitlin Ferrari, who's involved in pre and post production, and Freddie Garcia, who's helping out with this podcast in addition to doing his own. With all that said, I just want to thank you for joining us in uh, Coffee with Kupke, keep making Catholic history in the Diocese of Patterson.